Hello and welcome back to Educator.com AP Psychology. This unit is on research methods, the portion that is on statistics. You won't find this in most of your uh, textbooks in the methods unit. Instead, you'll find it in an appendix, but that doesn't make it any less important. You're always going to find a few questions on the AP Psych exam with this particular unit. So as we examine uh, research methods, we know that there are a couple of objectives. One is to the, uh, examine the purposes of descriptive statistics, but also inferential statistics. Those are two of the kinds of stats we're going to be looking at. And then we're going to be able to apply uh, the basic descriptive statistical concepts, including interpreting and constructing graphs and calculating simple descriptive stats, measures of central tendency standard deviation. And I'll show you how to do that as we go through this particular unit. So there are two types of stats. Descriptive, literally describing So information, describing numbers, organizing numbers in ways that we can help understand them a little bit better, make them more meaningful and easier to communicate to other people. We also then have inferential statistics. So we have to realize that infer means to draw out. It's not obvious. So we need to use small samples to uh, draw conclusions that are not initially obvious, but that's where the statistics will come in handy. First, we need to know a few number scales. Now, I'm not familiar with uh, any AP exam that has had these number scales on it, but it is still a part of the, the format of the numbers that we need to know. So this one, nominal scales. Nominal scales are interesting because they don't have any quantitative properties. They're for comparison only. And one of the ways uh, is to use what's called a Likert scale, a term that you will probably, if you become a psych major, you'll find out about. But it's a, a, it's a scale, for example, 1 to 5, 1 to 7, that you're agreeing, strongly agree, a neutral, disagree, strongly disagree, so that kind of a scale. And so it's typically going to look something like this. And so strongly disagree, disagree, neutral, agree, strongly agree. So it's nominal. It's based on naming. And so it has no mathematical value, and it's called a nominal scale. Another number scale is ordinal, and this is going to be ranking. And if you are a basketball fan or a football fan, but especially basketball, the prime example is going to be the seeds in the NCAA tournament. The differences, however, with the seeds is that the ranking is all you have because the rankings are not equal. The difference between number one rank and number four rank is not the same as between five and eight. So there's no independent specific mathematical value. It's just a ranking. So ordinal equals ranking. Number scales, again, we have now interval. And so there's lots of data that we can add and subtract. So we can do something mathematically with interval scales. The classic example of an interval scale is going to be temperature. SAT scores, AT, ACT scores, these are all interval scales that we can use. Now, things like the IQ scores, the Myers-Briggs, and others operate under the assumption of an interval scale. But with an interval scale, although we can do mathematics with them, there is no true zero point. And so that's going to be a distinction between the interval and the next one. 